This is the Absurd Podcast. Uh, I believe episode four, brand new podcast, um, with a special guest, Dave Ashby. Did I say it right? That's right. All right. Uh, you also go by Liquid Lizard, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and you're from the UK. Mm -hmm. Where, where about in the UK? Uh, so I'm based in Bristol, which is like the west, southwest side of the UK. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've never been there, so I'm just taking your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's down there, though? Is is it uh, still accessible with the COVID and all that stuff or no? Um, it's so, so you know, for people who, who basically know the UK, mostly are going to think of things like London, and which is all cities and things. And Bristol is one of those sort of like somewhere in between. It's kind of rural out in the countryside, but yeah, it's still yeah. got lots of city areas, lots of city routes and things. And it's the reason I like it there is because uh, it's a very creative area. So you can still have the, you know, the finance for like the business and everything that you can get here, but it's still creative at the same time. So. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, I have to check it out. And I oh, I do uh, think about London all the time when we're talking mm. about the UK. So. Well, Bristol is a very pretty place. Like there's a lot of landmarks. It's, and like I say, it's a mixture of, you know, uh, greenery and also buildings. And there's a lot of Roman style buildings oh, wow. and stuff as well yeah so nice. you get some very nice pictures around here cool cool yeah, yeah. I've, i think i've only been to out of the country like once mm. and uh i've only been to probably like four states other yeah. than that in the u.s so needless <laughs> to say i need to travel more <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so first things first uh oh by the way my name is uh kenmore that's what i go by mm -hmm. um so first things first is uh, who is Dave Liquid Lizard? Mm. Well, if, if you know me from social media, you'd say that I'm sort of like the Pokemon guy is what people usually say. Okay. Um, the basic gist is that uh, I'm a 3D artist, freelance 3D artist in the UK. And uh, I, I developed a following for putting uh, 3D, you know, AR, so augmented reality, uh creations into real space so like people send me footage and i put in you know something pop culture -y in front of them and they can react to it a bit like what you have with like filters and things like that yeah except i i try and make it that one step further where it's like you're in actually physically able to interact with them because i'm doing you know bespoke animations around it all so that's yeah. the basic gist and i've got a i've developed a following naturally just more focus on Pokemon than anything else lately, just because of the popularity and the size of. I've noticed that uh, mm. looking at your Instagram and uh, I found you out through TikTok. Mm. And uh, yeah, I love your animations. Uh, they're really good. Mm. Like uh, I I'm an artist myself. I'm no animator, but uh, mm. I have won like little awards in high school and stuff like that for art. Um, so yeah, man, from one artist to another, like, I mean, it looks really good. Like, thanks. It's not. Um, glitchy it's not pixelated it looks like legitimately like well done mm. um, so the main the main problem with it is that if i had something which was say movie level quality character to work with you can really mess with the color correction and the tracking and the animation things to make something look as real as possible yeah but when you have something that's cartoony as say pokemon uh the models i use you know a lot of them are officially the pokemon models from the Pokemon X and Y game. Okay. So, you know, that's quite an old game and the textures are quite old uh, mm -hmm. as they're, you know, they're the base that I'm using. So they can get kind of pixelated or they can be rough around the edges. And, you know, so I had to try and polish out as much as possible as I'm doing it. So for uh, people that don't know how to use uh, or how to even animate, mm. uh, what software do you use? And like, um, how do you, like, can you walk me through the steps of how you even make an animation? Yeah, so I actually, uh, I actually have started doing them because because it's becoming like making quote unquote content. Yeah, you know, every week and kind of keep a consistent, uh, you know, uh, line of new stuff coming, especially for the algorithms. Is that I need to be able to book in time to do that. So I've started doing them live to show people. Oh wow! This is how we make it so. Yeah. So um, I'm focusing a lot more on Twitch at the moment because I can 
live stream it on Tuesday nights, uh, me making something oh, so wow. people can see it. Yeah, I render it overnight and then I post it on the Wednesday to all the all the uh, networks. So okay. I keep a weekly thing, and also I'm making again content out of the process, which is great. Yeah. And so the the way I do it is that either myself or someone I know or someone who's interested will send me or I get hold of a piece of video footage. It's usually just a piece of phone footage. It's nothing fancy, you know. Yeah. Um, I haven't got loads of light setups or anything. It's literally someone will send me some footage. If it fits my criteria of it's shot well, the quality's good, and uh, I think I can work with it in, a, in an interesting way, yeah. then I'll take it on board and I put it through my 3D program, which is Cinema 4D, which okay. is my program of choice. But, you know, things like Blender and Maya and things like that, they all, they all could do this stuff. It's just, you know, this is what I use. And uh, I track the scene in 3D. So that means that you basically have, do you imagine like a, you're walking down the street or you're filming a living room or something? It's, bading, it's building that base for what you, your animation will animate from. Because okay. if you don't have a floor or a wall or something to work with, just like, like if you had a filter for your face, it's like it's the mask of your face yeah. that you attach the things onto, for instance. And so once that's done, once that tracking part is done, that's that's half the job done because that can take a lot of time for okay. the computer to you know understand it. And there's a lot of uh, technicalities in that. If like, how do you track something if there isn't something in the scene to track well? Because you're reliant on the computer to understand a scene, which can be tricky if, say, you've just got a blank wall with no information to track. Yeah. So, you know, it can be difficult. And then once you've gone past that phase, then uh, you need to get hold of, you know, got to set up the character. So the character needs to be in a format that you can not just animate, but also texture and render in a realistic way. Because you could, like I say, you, I get these models off the internet, which, you know, are freely available and they're, they're, anyone can go get them, but they're not set up in a way that is very usable or in a high quality of finish. It is literally pulled out of a very old game. So if you just press render on that as it is, it basically would look like, you know, what it looks in the old days. Like it's like a like 2D. A low, yeah, a low poly 2D, very cartoony flat um animation, uh well character. Yeah. Um and usually they'd be in there like quote unquote T pose, you know, uh unanimated, just you know, just the basic format with its uh bones, as it's oh. known in cinema. Um which is like it's like real life bones, you know. You you have to you have to when you have a character, you have to have the information of oh, you know, all your fingers need to have all the same bone structure as you know a real life thing would yeah. have, and then have controls on those to be able to tilt them and turn them and animate them. Yeah. And even though the bones will be in place, none of those controls will be. So that's that's what I basically have to do for every character is get the hold of the model set up all my controls so I can animate it on top of you know what already exists and then sort out textures and things to make it look realistic. And once all that process is done, then I can put it into the scene and then start animating those those controls to yeah. make the animation. Wow, that, that definitely, I know that is a lot of work. <laughs> mm. It sounds like a lot of work. Um, how long does it normally take you to do like one video of animation? So, because like I'm doing it on, you know, on Twitch now, it's uh, it's becoming quite uh, a regular thing. So I can easily say, you know, most streams, they go on for like maybe four hours if okay. everything goes well. And the rendering will happen overnight, which may take, depending on the length and complexity, could take four to five hours on average, let's say, um, yeah. on my system and how I render it. And, uh, it, it, and then it all comes, also comes down to things like, say, if you had something like Charizard, you might be breathing fire. You then got a level of do I need effects on top of this? Because that's a different process as well. Okay. As they say. It can get complex, but it's I've got quite a um a regimented way of doing it now. You know, it's just like I'm so used to doing it this way that I can just really streamline it and just make sure, yeah, I can just cut out all the problems and just try and do it as fast as possible now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. a lot of practice under your belt. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So um how long have you been animating? Um, I've been in the creative industry as, you know, doing this for my job, uh, uh, for about 
probably near to 18 to 20 years now, I think. Okay. Cool. Um, but 3D itself, probably about eight or nine years, probably. Oh, wow. And I taught myself just from oh, wow. like, like tutorials and things. YouTube and all that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah back when I first started, I had, had a drive to want to learn 3D for a, uh, a 3D comic I was building. And it's because I, you know, I can draw, but I'm no, I'm no like comic book artist. So yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it at a level that I would see as, oh, that's a professional looking, you know, finish. Yeah. And so my idea was, ah, what if I could make a character in 3D? So it would always look the same, animate it and everything, well, pose it more like, yeah. and then render it with like a cell shaded cartoon sort of effect, which you see in a lot of games these days. And that was the plan. So that's how I got into it. And then over time, it's just, oh, I didn't know I could do this in 3D or this in 3D. Oh, and look, I could do realistic stuff. And it sort of grew from there. And eventually I started getting work around the portfolio that I started to build from just practicing. You know? oh, so, cool. and now I, and over time I've sort of shifted into just being a freelance 3D animator. Okay. So it just to prove that, you know, I started my career as a graphic designer. That was my, like, I got a degree in graphic design and then I sort of jumped from that to be doing web design and then from jump from that to doing video editing and then learning 3d and then that's now what i do pretty much 90 percent of the time uh -huh. so you know it's, it's it's not like you pick a career path and then you just stick to it forever yeah it's you like you're always always learning you know evolved into what it is now because you can't really like especially with the industry the way it is all the different industries and in creative world you know things change quite quickly over like say a decade yeah but yeah. something like web design can nearly change every couple of years or something like 3d literally in the time in the last three years it's changed from what is known as cpu rendering to gpu rendering as like a standard and it's basically because of realism and how the fast it is compared oh. to what it used to be you know so you have to learn all these new new tricks or these new programs and get new tech and understand it all to keep up so it's just constantly evolving and like right now for instance um my mind is sort of moving towards maybe looking towards into the games industry for myself because oh, nice. because that's a natural tie-in of the fact that i like like playing games i like yeah. and i've got like because my web design sort of background it's like yeah that's like a natural sort of uh like game development with 3d yeah. makes total yeah. sense to me so you know it's rather going that way rather than going like, oh, I'm just going to go straight into the super realistic 3D world, which you could do because it's going that way. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's what interests you more, I guess. Yeah. Um, my brother was trying to get into that um, animation and all that stuff. And he, he likes playing games too, but uh, I don't think he mm -hmm. ever really pursued it like that. Um, do you plan it's on a, making... Oh, go ahead. It's, it's a very technical side of the 3D thing because... If you take take an example like um like Pokemon, like you you can have the the you can make a three D character, but you then have to pass it on to maybe someone else in the team to say to texture it or oh, or animate it or something like that, or even just uh, encode it into a game. And a game usually has limitations on what you can do, so like the size of it, the processing power, and things like that. And you might have a million of them. Say say if you had like a, a game with Pikachu in, you might want to have a thousand of them, you know, yeah. you won't be able to do that if it's a really dense model. So there's like ways you can mess with the textures to make it look more high res than it is. Uh, the game engine uh, by making the characters low poly and basic and small as possible, but still retaining as much quality as possible. So it's a very technical way of yeah. doing 3D. So it's a bit more complex than just, oh, get model, render it. You know, it's yeah, like get yeah. model, skew it down to something much more usable to pass on to another person in the in the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, sounds like a headache. I'm not gonna lie to you, but uh, when you enjoy it, it doesn't seem like it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a lot of work for sure. So you couldn't do it yourself. Like you would need a team, right? So if you if you imagine like. Any sort of game would be even simple, something as simple as say Tetris or something. You know, my job 
I guess as an animator or a 3D artist would be to make the elements like the blocks that would be coming down and maybe there's the game field itself and things like that. But okay. you're going to need a coder who can then take your objects and make the AI that runs it make sense of it. You know, it's like, oh, every frame oh, it's got to move down. If, yeah. the, if the controller presses a button, it has to turn. You know, if and it turns, where does that then end up? And what happens when it collides with something? It's all that sort of, again, technical side of things. So you can work with them and you can learn that stuff. But I find that if you if you try and do too many things in that chain uh, in one project, like if you try to be the creative director on the project, the 3D animator, and then, I don't know, even like the, the person you write in the text, you know, you can't no. do all of those things at once. Your brain just can't keep up with it all and do a good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's wow. I, I didn't realize how much work actually goes into animation and gaming. That's, that's, mm. uh, that's crazy. Um, but you're really good. Like, I, I, like I said, I've seen your stuff on TikTok. Uh, yeah. You do a lot of Pokemon uh, animations. That's what got me uh, into you. Mm. Uh, but yeah, man, they're all good. They're all really cool. Um, so Tell me about your, uh, like your upbringing, like mm. how, how did your environment result in you, uh, developing a love for art and animation? Mm. I, sp I think, but if you go all the way back to like literally high school and, uh, I was never good at a lot of, you know, the academic side of things. Like yeah. I think all my sort of grades back then were very much, pretty much average, not bad, just average. And the only thing I was ever good at was was art. Like okay. the art was the only thing that I actually had an interest in, anything I was actually good at. So um, I I then, when I was trying to leave from high school to go to like either, yeah, college um, in the UK at least, um, I needed to pick something that I wanted to do. And of course, a lot of people struggle with that. Even, even you know, they can be 30 years old in their life and still not have a clue of what they want to do with their life. And that's fine because as I said earlier, I studied one thing and I enjoy it, but I then jump to different careers that are similar, but you know, it's easier to branch out. Once, once you try something, you'll try something new. And, uh, when I was, I remember I originally at high school was looking at architecture, but you need a lot of grades for that. You know, you need oh, like okay. top level maths and, and sciences and things. And I was just like, it's not really realistic. And then I started reading up on graphic design and. I don't know, just reading on it like like oh messing with I don't know, text layouts and magazines and posters and all sorts. I'm just like, that sounds like fun. I could do that. Yeah, so I started yeah. to look into that and it just happened to be it just yeah, it's a perfect fit for me when it well, at least back then. So I then went through all my studies at college. So I did my uh, ND graphics course, which is uh you know, it's, it's sort of like the the first step towards uh what was it a national diploma. Oh okay. and, and then I went on to do a what was known as a HND uh, at university for again graphic design, and it was weird because I was already up on all the programs. Like I was using all Adobe programs and things uh, to do my career. And then when I got to my HND, they were just like, "Oh, this is the, these are the programs we're going to use, and let's train you up." And I'm like, "I already know all this. Like yeah. I'm not learning anything. You're just telling me things which I've already learned myself." By being yeah. just proactive uh -huh. and so I, I was talking to the people who run the course and i was like Look, is there any chance i could go up to the degree level um and the only reason they didn't choose the degree is because of the academics uh -huh. like writing and things in, involved in it i was like i don't think i'll be able to do it but then when I actually did i did actually go up uh -huh. and it was fine it was fine in the end like like it's just that sort of like oh i'm not good enough because you know high school says that my grades aren't good enough but yeah it was fine and um so eventually, yeah, got from my degree, I uh, got my I don't know, first honors in that and then went off to find, you know, a job. And then yep. when you find a job in, in your chosen career, you pretty much pretty much learn more than you ever did studying in your first week, you know, because there's oh, things wow. that they, they just don't don't teach you. And it's a, mostly about dealing with clients, dealing with people you're working with, learning off other people yeah you know traveling there to work the long hours the the fast turnaround as well when you're studying they're like oh you've got six months for this project yeah and in the real world it's like you've got 
two days <laughs> so <laughs> you have to be suddenly like what yeah, yeah. jump on it <laughs> yeah it's one of those things where you just got to say you just got to nod yeah i'll do it and you just got to figure it out you know for the process literally daily i had a <laughs> i literally had a problem this weekend because uh, my computer has been dying on me lately oh and wow and it's a literally it's, you know i can't i can't do my social posts can't do my work can't do anything if it dies so yeah um a manic saturday morning trying to fix it uh which i did um so that it can be rendering and it's doing that right now it's it's rendering a project and it's been doing it for the last 15 hours oh it's wow. got good it's got another 20 or so to finish it off Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That long. Wow. Yeah. It depends I mean, what it is. But. Yeah. I mean, it, it does pay off, you know, when the animations, you know, how they, how they go together, it'll, it'll pay off for sure. Well, there's, there's this, um, I can't remember the, exactly how it goes, but in my industry of 3d, uh, when you're talking to a client, there's this like, like rule that there's like this triangle of, um, uh, the, the sort of, outcomes you can have from a project, which is you can have it be uh, on time, uh, at high quality, and for a low price, but you can't have all three. You can only ever have two of those, not all three. Oh. <laughs> you know, you can have it high quality and, and low price, but it's going to take a while. Exactly. You know, see, so. <laughs> yep. And as uh, artists, uh, we can, I'm sure you can remember times where people wanted free work all the time or, oh. you know, cheap stuff. Oh, I'll give you $5. Like, bro, you don't know how long it takes me to render this. You know what I mean? A lot I, of people I get, don't understand artists working. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and I get because of, because of the you know naturally Pokemon breeds the sort of audience that will be the younger generation who you know they're not they're not even thinking about business. They're not thinking about money. They don't you know understand what uh, goes into some things. And I get I get almost pretty much get it daily just someone saying um i i really like your work and you know i want to be in a video here i've sent you something could you could you get it done by the end of the week like like it's just just a complete sort of like don't have the time for it yeah you don't have any money for it it's like what 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 do i get out of this exactly. and 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 to be honest like i do a mixture of there is some com commission stuff and there is free stuff and yeah. it basically comes down to things like are they someone I know? Are they a friend? You know, that's yes. like the free side. Um, or if they got a really good idea that I'm really interested in, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I just want to do that, you know. But then there's the other side of like, I've got an idea, it's not great, and um, you know, I, I will pay you for it. And it's just like, well, I don't know if I still want to do it, you know, because I'm still busy. I still I, I have an actual job. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so what you sorry, what, what what you see on social media isn't my job, you know. It's okay. It's similar, but that's what I share because I know, you know, people are going to like that. But my actual work is much more dry and down to earth and advertising and, you know, that's like thing. making logos and stuff or sometimes um, it's more in 3D. It's more it's more like a prototype parts for something like a like it'd be a, like I say, like it's say a medical product that's not been built or is going through a testing phase. You know, it's a prototype yeah. and like they've got the CAD file for they want to show it off they want to yeah. you know excite investors but but they they don't want to spend the money sending it off to china to get built or something you know exactly. so they just want someone to take it and make it as realistic as possible and show what it does yeah that's, yeah. that's kind of I, my work is a mixture of that and then like say advertising so okay. like you know like like 3d adverts for selling a product okay. yeah so i'm assuming your your side hustle which is the animations the pokemon animations and stuff uh, business is booming, right? Do you know what? It 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 really is this month. Like this month has gone absolutely insane. I don't know if it's because lockdown is coming to an end here and all the companies are opening back up and they're getting a lot more work in all of a sudden because it's usually like a two week delay on everything. So yeah. you know, you get to Christmas and everyone panics two weeks before, sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just it's been crazy right now. I've just had all my old clients just Keep phoning me up saying oh can can i fit in this project i'm like i can't i'm already booked up and yeah. pokemon wise like yeah i've got i've got plenty of people wanting stuff at the moment like i'm not running out of content for the next you know month and a half i don't think yeah <laughs> yeah uh 
you kind of hit it on the nail with Pokemon, you know, that, that stuff's been around for 25 years, you know, uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, it came out and, uh, I had the, the Game Boy game. I still have the Game Boy, you know, uh, had the cards, you know, like uh, that was my childhood. And then mm. 25 years later, it's still, it's, I would say, uh, it's more popular now, mm. you know, and that, that's the crazy part. It's like me, me personally. It's like uh, I watched the the cartoon, the original cartoon series back in yeah. the day when I when I was younger, and didn't really collect the cards. But I did play some of the original games, and then sort of just fell out of it as I grew up, and I haven't played anything. Yeah. And then more recently, you know, in the past few years, because of what I've been doing, it's like it's got me back into it, especially with Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go was the thing which I think made everyone who used to be a fan get right back into it again yeah it got everyone out of the house for sure <laughs> that too um and it's been great for lockdown as well because it's a good yeah. excuse to go outdoors right um and uh but then they started introducing all the new gens and i'm like i don't know these ones yeah and I, I was worried about because like, i'm not i'm gonna i'm not gonna come back to pokemon go because i'm not gonna be able to pick up these new ones but it's amazing how quickly you can retain that information and now i know them all it's great and because of that, I've now played some of the, the games I've missed as well. Yeah. To try and catch up on things. And I don't know, like you say, it's, it's, it's so popular right now. And, it's, and the audience is so varied as well. Yeah. yeah. How old are you by, by any chance? <laughs> I'm 40 next few weeks. I'm, okay. I'll be 40. And so I'm, um, it's, I'm 30. It's, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just like you get, I find you have like that, like 30 to 40 year olds will, will play it. And then you have, the new generation of all the kids playing it as well so yeah um yeah and i've had I've, I've got some funny stories around like uh the things i make obviously i'm not making it for the pokemon company or anything so i tend to push the boundary in areas that they would never and, and then that's good that 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 makes some worthwhile like you can do like mewtwo doing some crazy stuff you know like Mm. I don't know. Like that's well. On the example, head. the example I'm thinking of is uh, the Charmander one, where it's literally in the first series. They mention it, saying, you know, first time you see Charmander, if its flame, if its tail flame goes out, it dies. Like that is, oh, that yeah. is legit, right? Yeah, yeah. But we've never seen it. Yeah. So yeah. I did that. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's one Charmander. Yeah, there's there's one <laughs> where I got my my friend Peter from from Denmark. He's He's been in a lot of my videos because he's really good at filming them. And uh, I said to him, I really want to do this one. Uh -huh. uh, I think you could do it, but you're going to get a lot of hate for it. And, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. and and so it's him on the sofa with him, like, you know, oh, yeah, just just like stroking charm and uh, giving all the attention. And you got Squirtle uh -huh. next to him going like, with my attention. And then just sees the tail flame, blows it out, and literally just having X's for eyes as it falls over. Oh, and it's wow. just... You know, it, it's it's very tongue tongue in cheek. It's not real, and it's yeah. you know, it's all silly. But it is based in law. And then, oh, the comments. People are like, "I wasn't expecting murder." Ah. And then, <laughs> or like, um, I, the best one was I had someone say, it was someone on TikTok saying, "Oh, I'm, uh, me and my daughter watch your, your your stuff all the time." Yeah, yeah. I've got to say, you've traumatized her with this. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking, maybe not show her. <laughs> right? <laughs> Put a disclaimer. You got to be yeah. able to view this video. Like, I, if she's that young, she shouldn't be on the network. You know? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> nah, that that's really cool. Uh, like I said, I've seen a lot of your videos. 90% of them, they're like Pokemon. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it just it brings to life you know my childhood you know mm. seeing like the charmanders and the my my favorite one was always squirtle i always chose squirtle mm. i love blastoise i have yet to ever own a blastoise card maybe when i get rich somewhere i'll buy a first edition <laughs> off somebody but uh i've never owned one uh i think i remember in the 90s when it was it just came out really big and my mom had bought me a holographic Nitto King for sixty dollars. Mm. Yeah, and 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 they the this person had a Blastoise holographic for eighty dollars. Yeah, but she told me that was too expensive, mm. so she, I settled for the Nitto King. So Nitto King was my first uh, purchased holographic. 
um, but my first booster had nine tails holographic. I, so, I can't picture my parents shelling out that sort of money for uh, a piece of cardboard. I just cannot. I, I agree. It. I agree. But the nineties, it was just that yeah. big, you know? And then, like I said, I was about what, seven or eight when mm. this all happened. I didn't even, so I, I played the game first then the cards and then the cartoon so the cartoon for me was last mm. but uh but yeah and I, I just remember me and my brother would always stay up wake up uh early in the morning like three in the morning turn on the little game boy light and just play <laughs> you know that was our childhood you know mm. pokemon was everything i remember some people used to try to jump me for my pokemon cards i remember i had a oh, uh japanese charizard holographic mm. and me being a dumb kid would bring them to school and yeah. then people would see what I had and they would like try to mess with me. And some people, I remember this one person, he was like, let me see your Pokemon cards. And he got my deck and he was looking at them and he was dropping them on purpose. He was like, oops, oops. So me being young and dumb, I would uh, bend down to pick the cards up off the grass. But while I was doing that, he would be pocketing some of my cards and then I would find my cards in someone else's hands that didn't that weren't that educated in what the value of Pokemon cards. So I would trade them like a potion and all these <laughs> lame cards to get my better cards back. It's yeah. just, uh, that, so, that was my childhood. So say so, say so, so those uh, those cards you bought that were quite expensive at the time. If they increased in value to date, then like, oh they... yeah 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 they they would be. If I kept them in good, like I don't have what I had back then. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't know what where. I, I remember I put them in a binder, but they're with my mom somewhere. And last time I checked, I told her to if she can find my binder, she can find it. So I don't know what happened. They just grew legs and ran away or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have some with me, but not really too many first editions and not really too many holographics. Yeah. But I, I had a lot of good cards. And, and I do remember, literally, I was in fourth grade. And this fifth grader had, uh, I don't know if you remember, they had uh, little subscriptions that, that showed the price tags of every Pokemon card. Hmm. Well, uh, I was in fourth grade. This fifth grader, uh, we were waiting for my, my mom. So it was after school. Uh, this fifth grader had this magazine that had all the price tags of all the cards mm. and he, he brought his binder and this other girl that was not educated in the value. She was just getting into him too. And for some reason, as a fifth grader, she had money. It was weird. Mm. So she was like, I, I want to buy some Pokemon cards. And the guy he, or the kid, he opened his binder and she picked out whatever she wanted. And uh, he was like, okay, is that all you want? And she was like, yeah. And, and he, he came out with the magazine he was like, okay, well, that this card is $26. This card is $14. And he was going on and on. And it, it cost her a total of over $100. A yeah. fifth grader had a, over $100 to spend on Pokemon cards. <laughs> I don't know how she had this money, but like it, it was, yeah, that the Pokemon, when it first came out, that was, mm. that was everything, you know? But yeah, that was my childhood, man. I, I, I loved Pokemon. I loved it. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, in, it's interesting that, that you know, that the, what I do has, has evolved primarily into Pokemon because I did try and do other things that I'm interested in and, and my own characters as well. And, you know, it's just natural. It's like, if you're going to get views and clicks and comments on something, you know, mm -hmm. the algorithm's telling you, it's like, you should stick to doing that. And it's like, yeah, it's cool. And then I'm worried, you know, I get worried. It's like, okay, but what if I tried to do just one of my own characters? What would happen then? You know, with the yeah. view still be there. And it's very strange because it's like every network's different. They all act differently. And overall and over time, the averages is out. It's like, it's still, they're still good, but obviously yeah, Pokemon's yeah. going to win. But it's interesting, like looking at, the stats and things and how it works yeah. understanding well, don't, algorithms. don't you uh you have animations with your own characters though right yes like uh what is it the lynx and razor are those yours yeah lynx razor and cinder those are like my free uh characters i have 
have a little 3D print of uh, oh, links. Oh, wow. See, that's yeah. cool. I was mm. going to talk to you about that. Like, uh, the, it's cool that you are animating your own characters mm. and then making uh, 3D prints. And uh, I believe you also have, yeah, yeah, 3D prints of them. Um, those animations are really cool too. I'm not going to lie. I seen them. I, I, I was looking through your videos on Instagram and TikTok. Um, yeah, man, I would, I, I, I like what you're doing. I would keep uh, bringing them up, you know, even, I don't know if you've already done this, but uh, if, if it's not too hard, yeah, I would include them even in like a, like a group of Pokemon. Like the yeah, Pokemon. I mean, I've you know? I've done some like uh, probably the one I remember recently is uh, where I did uh, Pokemon Go. So you know, you have the Pokemon Go screen, and yeah. rather than the Pokemon being in place, I had I had links, and then it has you know it has all the information. I put him in actually in there doing like you know an animation sort of thing, and yeah. then you have Razor, who's like the uh, you know uh, jealous sibling sort of thing, yeah. come in, push him out the way, okay. and then everything changes. To razor's thing where it's all blue rather than green and uh you know that's funny you know i like all yeah, that yeah, yeah. i tend to not want to you know put them literally next to pokemon characters because people get confused like i've because people get used to i'm doing pokemon the amount of times people will just come up and be like oh what pokemon's that i'm like mm, it's not <laughs> like, <Fire Pokemon. laughs> yeah and and the thing is um like razor in particular is taken over my branding on Twitch, like it's all because he's blue and my yeah, branding's yeah, pretty yeah. much blue. He's basically naturally just taken over. So he's always around somewhere and I try and incorporate all of them. But um, yeah, yeah the, the, the whole, as I said before, the reason I got into 3D was to make a 3D comic and the 3D comic literally, you know, is involving links most of the time. Yeah, so yeah. that's where it all sort of stemmed from. So it's have, just a have... natural progression. Yeah. No, I, li I like them. I like your characters. Mm -hmm. um, have you got into NFTs? Like I was, ah, yes. you can probably make your own NFTs with your characters. Yeah. So, good idea. so when that big boom sort of happened at the beginning of the year, it's like uh, a lot of my, like, uh, you know, my peers who are all doing 3D as well, they, uh, they always started saying, oh, you should get into it. You should do this and the other. And a lot of people tell me, you know, you should get into this. So, you know, I did investigate. I made a whole bunch of uh, generic NFTs for my my branding. So it means yeah. I could just churn them out. And, it, and you know what? It, it's actually really easy to churn out some generic, uh, you know, it's what's known as like primitive shaped objects yeah. chucked in a scene that looked really pretty, like a piece of art, basically. It's yeah. like abstract art. And it's very simple to do that. And, and the interesting thing is, unlike painting, you could make something very abstract made out of cubes and spirals and things make it look very pretty with lighting and yeah. then you just put 10 cameras in that one scene and you just you've got 10 pieces of art yeah because you know you, you don't you don't need to once you've got the assets you can just press render half the job's done and i went down that whole route of i made about 10 different nfts that i was gonna use i opened up uh one of the nft sites I put in some money and I, I put, you know, I attached it to it and I tried to put it in there and I think, and that's where my research sort of went to and then died because uh, I had some other friends, my peers who also went down that route and gave it a go. <clears throat> so they were much more, so like much more invested literally yeah. in, in what they were doing. And I was just like, I'm trying this as a test. Yeah, yeah. And what I learned about it is that, you need to have money to make money on those things because oh, okay. even if it isn't one of the big platforms for the NFT uh, Ethereum type type systems, it's still um, you need to attach you need a certain amount of what is known as gas, which uh -huh. is like you know the amount of money to attach to an item before they will put it in the system at whatever value you deem it as. So you still need to have something like I think when I tried it. Uh, that particular piece was one piece of artwork needs to have like 80 pounds attached to it before you can oh. even put it in the system. So, so the, you need to put, a certain website determines the price tag for each entity? You, you determine the price tag, but the process of, of putting it into the system costs money. Oh. And they call that gas. Oh. Uh, it's like to get it going. And then once it's in the system, 
it can then be auctioned and then it can go up in price depending on who you are and your connections and you know how and that's why people are saying you oh, you should do it yeah but i know some people who were influential who did it and they they basically stopped doing their job for a bit to focus on it yeah and the end result was the about the money they made yeah they made some money when they sold their things on but they they also could have just made money just doing work you know so the amount of time for like putting it in the system making the artwork promoting it making sure it gets sold and pushing it around the system and checking it all the time you could just be doing work and like i say you still need to have money to attach that into the system to push it there and that was one piece so okay. imagine 10 pieces you're talking like you know yeah 100 pound it's, it's a lot of money to put in for yeah. something that i'm just testing and may not result in much so i was just like mm. so my sort of and then and then uh, literally a few weeks after that was when um it came out that you know using any sort of nft system is really detrimental to the environment because of uh the amount of energy that is required for pushing this stuff around and making the system work and for me just my own you know moral standpoint it's just like i can't i can't i can't be a part of it basically unless they clean that up yeah so that's why I, I basically jumped out after that no i mean i you just educated me on the whole thing like I, i've heard of nfts I follow a lot of people that have made their own and mm. talk about NFTs a lot, but I never understood the, the process because mm. in the future, I would like to make NFTs as well. But, mm. but yeah, you're right. That how you explained it makes a lot of sense. Like you basically need some sort of capital to put it into the system to generate more capital. And I'm, I'm on I mean, the same boat. You could, you could say that, that buying a weapon inside Fortnite is the same as an NFT because you're making a digital asset that you put into a system which yeah. then someone might buy for money whether that's credits in game or as long as it's related to real money that's what nfts are they're digital they're digital currency based on an asset yeah and so it's not that the nft system is bad it's just that the way it currently works in the quote-unquote art industry um is just it's not quite there yet it's mm. it's still got its negative things but the games industry again the games industry um has lots of positives for it because you don't you don't necessarily need you know an nft ethereum style system running to make money on it you can again just do work you know yeah. you're just making assets and you sell it to a company then they sell it on to their users and you get a cut of that yeah that's absolutely fine okay yeah, that's uh, you definitely educated me on that. So, <laughs> um, so are you uh, how how many more original characters are you planning to create? And and also, what's your goal on that? Like, mm. do you plan on making like an entire, basically, like let's say another Pokemon esque? Um, I don't have it to hand. I don't think it's not here right now, but. Um, I actually did make one comic uh, years ago, which uh, it's just a single comic, which I drew. Uh, so it's very early days. Like you're talking like 15 years ago. Okay. I drew it. Um, so it's before I was doing 3D or anything. Yeah. Um, and it's part of a story that I have written out. If I've got it, at least in bare bones, I've got it in a few little sketchbooks and everything. I've written it all out. It's a giant story. Yeah. And I'm just, and it means that I can choose somewhere in a timeline where it's interesting to start my uh you know start off the first comics and like i say links at the moment is like as is in the entire thing mm -hmm. and my other characters like cinder never existed that's something i made up recently and then razor is uh is mentioned in it but is m way down the line in it so uh basically it's all about you know it's not really focusing on links but links is one of the main characters in it and the other characters are very like humanoid alien-esque yeah slash superhero type yeah. type characters and yeah i started make, working on it a few years ago in 3d and this is before i was doing like gpu rendering so it looks completely different to what i would do now yeah um the goal is always to get back to it it's just finding the time at the moment because there's just so much going on right now either, either it's work or it's the social media stuff or it's twitch you know it's, yeah there's a lot of things going on um, which I know won't, you know, stay that way forever. So yeah. I'm just sort of enjoying it for the moment. And as for making new characters, I will need to revamp all my characters 
because I haven't got them in what they, should be the new setup. And like, if you want to get technical, uh, like uh, Lynx and Razor is set up in a CPU system, whereas Cinder, the Red Dragon, the new one that I've got, uh -huh. um, she's set up in uh, a GPU system. So they look slightly different. Okay. But at the end of the day, she's going to look much more realistic than the older two. Okay. And I need to upgrade those ones onto the new system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's going to take a while, basically. <laughs> so Lynx is like your Charizard. Right? Yeah, he's he's like, he's like uh, OG. Yeah, because uh, um, he the reason I started with him is because he's always the sort of comic relief. And you think about about like uh, trying to think of an example, but uh, you think of something where you have a story with like all serious stuff going on, and then there'll be just that sort of comic relief character in the corner corner that's really silly but it yeah. keeps everything fun and happy even though they're not really participating in the main plot that's what links is oh okay. yeah. yeah so uh you made a 3d uh copy of links do you do you like sell actual toys of links of your own creations or no i i would love to make like a plushie or something yeah, yeah. I would love that. um i looked into it a while back and it's not that difficult it's just uh it's just putting the time in and putting some capital towards getting them made. God knows where yeah. I'd store them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause uh, yeah, like I said, I, I come from an art background um, mm. and I used to, I loved like Marvel and superheroes and all that. So I would, I, I would, and I've always enjoyed drawing my own superheroes. Mm. And uh, when I would in, uh, draw my characters and create my own little creatures, like uh, it, there's something about them that's like these are mine you know like you know mm. like you said pokemon's pokemon but you got links you got you know uh razor and the other ones it's like and then they look cool and then you already have a 3d print mm. i'm 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 excited for you like uh mm. i would love to see like even little miniature toys you know mm. how little micro machines i don't know of, of these characters yeah and, uh yeah i think there's gonna be some money behind that for sure because uh if you make the right moves mm. I mean, it can it can uh lead to something big you know in the future see that that, that was always my, my plan with uh using pokemon and in uh social media you yeah free TikTok existing yeah um using instagram uh as a way to show my portfolio to try and get work and then at the same time it was like well i could use i could use other characters because it wasn't always ar it was all you know there were there were some early ones where it's full cg yeah little skits like the little little animations where uh razor and links will be doing something really silly yeah and then over time i was like oh i might add in some pop culture stuff as well and i was just trying to do animation and try and make an audience around something similar or at least around them so that yeah. when i released an actual piece of content that is like I say only mine that I'd already have the audience there to show it to. Yeah. And then over time, I started doing the AR thing, which people seem to like more because it was like, oh, I haven't seen this before. This is new. And uh, and then it just naturally was like, well, I'll try a few pop culture things here and there, here and there. And then, of course, it starts going down Pokemon. And it still aligns with this audience who like Pokemon. Yeah. Animation and characters and all this sort of stuff still aligns with you know what my comic would eventually become. Yeah. So, Keep doing it because i'm making i'm making an audience that i can show stuff to so, yeah what as as a as a third party mm. you know a person looking in i think you should like involve your characters mm. in the mix of like pokemon or, or even whatever else you probably create like i mean digimon's out there too like mm. just, uh, as a artist because mm. i was i'm thinking about what you're saying and yes, I like your Pokemon content. I like your characters, but um, as a third party looking in, right? Mm. I don't know enough about your own characters yeah. to know, oh, Lynx does this, Razor does this. You know, like maybe because I, I, I'm just getting into your content as well. But I think you can be pulling from the Pokemon audience as well if you mm. have like, for instance – a baby lynx and a, and a Charmander, you know, going up a hill, you mm -hmm. know, or like little, like 
by just in, incorporating your your own creations, mm. dropping them into what's already there, I feel like you're gonna you can possibly convert some of the Pokemon audience to your mm. own characters and then make them like, over time. There, there is especially recently. It's like you know, my audience increasing very suddenly. Yeah, is very much like there's going to be a lot of new people and a lot of people. You know, they don't go back and look at your history of stuff yeah. i could quite i could quite easily not make another animation ever again and just you know delete what i've got now and just repost them and no one would know any different i, I could do that but the thing is that that doesn't interest me because that's like that's that's a way of like you know getting views and things but um i'd rather be doing something interesting and new and pushing the boundaries and again learning new things yeah. and yeah you're, you're right that there, there's a lot of new people who won't have any clue who they are probably haven't even seen a lot of their posts and yeah is it like i say it's getting kind of like a routine at the moment with uh, the twitch thing on on tuesdays yeah. which is to do content which is probably going to be pokemon because that's what i've got lined up you know it's yeah. the footage i've got lined up but you're right i should uh focus on more the personal stuff every now and then yeah because it's basically like you're you're collabing basically you know yeah. like your pokemon everyone knows well, a majority of the audience knows what Pokemon is. Mm. And then there's this new character. And it's good when someone says, hey, is that a new Pokemon? Bam. Conversation just opened for this introduction of this new character. You know, yeah. so the audience of Pokemon is going to like your stuff, too, because, oh, him and Charmander hate ice cream or whatever, or whatever <laughs> it is. And yeah. it, so it's like you're developing, you're, you're letting the audience in on the personalities of these new characters and then they relate so much to Pokemon. They're always with the Pokemon characters. Eventually they'll branch out and, you know, possibly be their own uh, empire in the future. Um, but yeah, I think that collabing with the, the, the things you already like um, animating is, is going to be a very good move for your characters. Cause I, I mean, you got good characters, man. That like, does there's um like someone it, it tends to happen every now and then someone someone will approach me with uh an idea of saying oh i've got an idea for making a you know in my case it's a comic but say a short animation about about pokemon uh in the real world so i've got a bunch of actors and i need i need help with the you know putting a 3d character and i'm like yeah okay fair enough but so, so like you were saying that they will use the pokemon platform to do an animation but it is still focused primarily on pokemon yeah so it's almost like you're, you're, you're self-promoting your own thing but it's really you're promoting pokemon yeah but then the the thing that makes me laugh is uh they then explain oh yeah but i'm going to be doing it from this point of view where it's i don't know you're taking literally the pokemon branding and making it say adult or yeah, 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 yeah. doing something which doesn't relate to kids or is it is detrimental to the pokemon franchise and it's like i don't know if that's gonna work because yes it'd be funny for your audience because oh yeah that's funny you know oh, look, ash is swearing you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but it's like but no no sort of no one at say pokemon is gonna be on board with that not not as a way as like um uh copyright or anything like that but more like if you're trying to sell something to them like oh i want to try and sell a sell you an animation let's say a yeah. series let's make a netflix series which is you know a spin-off of pokemon where it's a bit more adult and it's like yeah they're not going to buy into that because it's detrimental to the brand and and you you'll be surprised the amount of people who don't get that you know that yeah, they yeah. have an idea and they're so focused on the idea and it's like this is going to be huge and everything and it's like yeah but it's still a brand you have to think of it from you know the brand's perspective how they're going to feel about it yeah so using using their ip as yeah, a platform yeah. to push your ideas you know it's a good way and a bad way of doing it yeah uh, unless unless maybe you can uh do something like uh charizard enters this other dimension yes mm -hmm. pokemon will still be there but when it goes to your characters mm -hmm. obviously they're not pokemon they're this other um group of creatures you know it's so like, it's like, like if um you look at uh smash brothers oh yeah, yeah yeah exactly you know, you, you can you can have Pokemon, you can have uh, Final Fantasy, you can have all sorts in this one universe. Yeah. Still makes sense, but they still act 
the way they are. You can beat them up and things, but yeah, you know, it's just a perfect example. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I, I think you'll you'll get it. I think you'll yeah. you'll. I like your ideas, man, and uh, I have faith. Uh, this thing will evolve and and uh, be something huge. So, what's the end goal for for your your creations? Like you you mentioned the comic book. Uh, yeah. You mentioned ser- like Netflix series. Like, is that one of your goals to make a little series about it? Not really, because I know the logistics and the ins and outs of how difficult that is. But I, you know, one, one of the things that really stands out for me as a prime example of what can happen is okay. Adventure Time. So, oh, okay. um, you can't really see it, but I've got, a, got an Adventure Time picture. On my oh, mind. yeah, I see that. Yeah, But, yeah. but like, um, the way that Adventure Time worked is that it was there was a so the guy who originally created the idea of it had a i guess it's like a mood book mood board book of like the main characters the world the general gist of things but no actual fleshed out story and it was all a visual book basically and he took that and got it in front of people who make television series which would be a cartoon network i guess okay um and literally from that spawned the actual tv series you know? oh, wow. and that person was still at the driving seat you know pushing the stories through the law of what it should be but having writers attached to it like that would be the ultimate goal and uh, like because i've got all my characters i've got all my story it's it's making it in a way that you could visually quickly show that to someone so they get the idea of what it is and yeah. therefore buy into it and you know, these animations are a great way of visually showing personality and, you know, how things could work, which is great. But then it's more the sort of uh, the bigger picture of what is this world? What is the story? What is all of that? So if I was going to do it, that's the way I would go with it rather than rather than saying, I'm going to make episode one as a pilot. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's that's a big task in itself. You know, that's why you have, say, people at Pixar spending, you know, they'd have something like 50 animators and a whole bunch of writers and Jeez. God knows what. And then not to mention the render times and you have expertise in, you know, character development and lighting and, you know, everything yes, um, and to do that as one person is just ridiculous. So, and a lot of people would do that. Like they, they would go, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try and make this episode one. And it's like, it's a nice idea, but if you've got no one else involved, it's not likely because by yeah. the time you get halfway through the project, something in your life is going to get in the way. Yeah. New job, lose your house. You know, it's, it's just things always get in the way. Yeah. So from my point of view, I'm trying to keep it much more vague, but then I have got an idea for a shorter animation. Like it's a, like a five minute or maybe probably less than that, probably like a three minute animation of just links. Yeah. And then know who he is and it's set in the world. You can have some jokes and it's very much like a Pixar short you know oh nice nice yeah uh i i believe in in your stuff bro uh and i've seen what you do on tiktok your instagram um i mean you're doing the right things like Mm -hmm. you it's not like you're you've never introduced them already like you have some animations with them already so like yeah you're already doing what you're supposed to be doing um and then you're already getting a lot of attention on your uh, art your animations who knows? Maybe uh, one day some director or from a cartoon from Cartoon Network. I don't know. You know, sees that's, the game, man. That's, that's one thing I would say that is a bonus with social media. Yeah. Um, like I, I've, I've become much more like cynical on what social media can do for you, especially as an artist. Like, um, I used to be always aware, thinking around the way of, oh, how many views is it going to get? Because therefore, that equals, you know opportunity and sometimes that's true but mostly views just equal more views or more followers it doesn't equal say money or or you know a connection or a sponsor or something not unless you target certain things or you you go out of your way to try and find it but what i have found which is really weird for me is i've actually had conversations with people who are actors or directors in hollywood i've actually had those people Oh wow! To me personally, and be like, "Oh, I like your stuff." Wow! Could we do something? But it's always, it's always wishy-washy like ideas that 
are in the future is a maybe it's never like concrete and because i'm i'm a freelancer and i'm used to clients being like that i'm sure we're like well do you have a project do you have a budget is is there literally something in mind or are you just spitballing oh, and okay. it's usually just spitballing but a good thing is i've now got those connections so if i did have something i wanted to push around i could always be like well i've got a contact do you yeah. know anyone you know that that is the beauty of uh, social media you know mm. uh, talking to I'm, I'm talking to you from the uk you know mm. what i mean like the connection right there like uh and I, I found you out on tiktok and i liked your stuff and so yeah i mean we do live in a in a good age for that stuff for sure mm. um i did enjoy this conversation man uh, I learned a lot <laughs> about the, the animation world. Um, and I, like I said, I'm an artist like you. Uh, this was, I, I loved the, this conversation. I, I, I was so invested in you becoming this well, well-known animator from my point of view, because you're getting a lot of love on, on TikTok for sure. A lot of eyes. Mm. Animations are on point. I like your characters. Um, yeah, man, it's 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 from me looking in, uh, it's going good, man. I, I can uh, I feel like you're gonna you're gonna hit that that one person's uh, social media, and they're not gonna be wishy washy. They're gonna be like, hey, man, yeah. I need you in the next week. Can I fly you out to whatever? Yeah, literally. Going, <laughs> you know, if someone did that, I'd be much more like, oh, okay, let's let's talk. <laughs> yeah, 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 true, true. Um, I do have one more thing. Yep. Uh, I I do make music. I don't know if you remember. Um, I did hit you up in a DM. I made a a, a remix to the Pokemon theme song. Yeah. Did you ever listen to that by any chance? Yeah, I did. Uh, what did you think of it? It was cool. It was like, cool. I, I like I I but you know what my my favorite style of music that I listen to is pretty much remixes of. Uh, game music most of the time but <laughs> oh nice nice yeah so uh uh like yourself i uh i'm i guess you can say i'm a freelancer but in the music industry i try to get mm. my stuff out there um uh, you don't have to but man like i said i'd be honored if you would use that song um, on like a pokemon animation do you have it uh available on tiktok is it in i do the i do i'll, yeah, I'll send you a dm I'll send yeah. you a DM of it. And it's just uh I I took the vocals of the the original Pokemon theme song, mm. but I actually sang them because I couldn't find the vocals isolated. Like I, I'm learning my own self. I don't know all the ins and outs. I didn't have the means to isolate the vocals, so I just sang them. Yeah. Uh, changed the pitch so they're it's kind of a lower pitch, but it's a like a, mm. a dancey song. You you've heard it before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll send you the DM on it. But um, but yeah, man, I enjoyed this this conversation. I learned a lot. I wish you, you the best. Um, your characters are awesome. <laughs> Thank like you so know. much for, uh, for for yeah for doing this. Yeah, and uh, all the way from Bristol, UK. Yep, Dave Ashby, aka Liquid Lizard. Y'all follow him. Do you have any uh you any any shout outs you wanna you wanna say like your social media is where where to find um, and all that? It's it's pretty simple. Like on on any pretty much any social network, you'll find me under Dave Liquid Lizard. Dave Liquid Lizard. All right, man. Uh, that's a wrap. I enjoy this conversation. Best of luck to you. And thanks so much. You're, you're a dope animator. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah. All right, man. See, See you later. You.